Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today we want to explore one of the most successful products made out of plastic ever. Lego bricks. <laughs> Let me show you their features. These colorful little pieces of plastic actually have been designed uh, in the midst of the 20th century, so that's a long time ago. And um, they are actually really well made. Uh, they stick together and you can build crazy cool things out of them. But they're also very, very hard, as anyone who ever stepped on one can certainly confirm. <laughs> but also, they are almost indestructible. I mean, I've really rarely saw one breaking. And therefore, they could be cool ammo. Let's explore it. Of course, all you need to use Lego bricks as ammo is a slingshot, like this Rambone with a fairly weak band set. They are very light, so this is only about a gram and a half. So you don't need a powerful band set for it. And actually, they fit in the pouch nicely. Whoops! <laughs> it is fun and it works, but it's a little light and I don't think it's very dangerous. And that is unacceptable here at the Slingshot Channel. So we have to make a gun that shoots them in a more dangerous condition. And here is what I came up with. The Lego shooting pistol. <laughs> Let me show you its features. As you see, it's a fairly long pistol. Um, of course, it is chambered for the 16 by 16 millimeter Lego bricks. Um, the rubber is scalable, of course, but there is another band set that has a purpose too. Because once you cock this and you do it like that, then these rubber bands will pull the sled back to the front so that you are not shooting with this sled engaged. Also, you have this breech that you can open like this and actually single in individual bricks can be loaded right into the uh, little breech here. But the longer projectiles have to be muzzle loaded. But then this still has an important purpose. If we muzzle load like three bricks that are put together, that's easy enough. They slide down the barrel, but of course they will easily also fall out again, which is bad. But this here actually clamps it in. So if I lift it a little bit, then, you know, it slides in even more and is put under pressure by this here. And once you shoot, then of course it swings back to normal position. Of course, this has my non-patented but absolutely unique one-piece trigger sear mechanism that is held under pressure by this little bit of rubber. Works great. Okay, cool little pistol. Is it accurate? Let's test. We will shoot these empty Coke bottles from about five meters distance. Okay, we'll go for the middle one first. Load in a two-piece. Ah! Hit it! <laughs> So if you look at the damage, it really kicked a nice dent, it hit it low, and it even pierced the coke bottle a little bit. Amazing, a Lego brick. Now we'll go for the left one. Ah! Full hit! And the remaining right one. Ha! All three of them cleared. All right, we have established that this thing is accurate, but it is, of course, not dangerous enough as announced. So we've been thinking about what we can do. And the idea now is to just put a nail in front, as it is a good tradition here. So, if you look at how it's done, simply we drilled a little hole through two of the bricks, so the, the nail pokes out, and then you could put as many of the additional bricks behind it as you want. The heavier it is, the more momentum it will have. 
and let's try to shoot it into this wooden board and see if it sticks and flies stable. Slide it down the barrel, clamp it, and shoot it! Ha ha ha, it sticks! Now, of course, this sticks in firmly, but you can also see that, of course, it kicked the additional brick out just because there's nothing else that would hold it back from this. But the ammo is intact and ready for reuse. Now, that is a decent stinger, but of course, we can upsize it. So, we used a bigger nail and made this. Let's see if that one still flies straight. Okay, same procedure. Slide it in the weapon ha it works <laughs> it, it came in ramrod straight and really sticks into the wood wow much more force than the tiny one can we make even more mean i think so so we put in this huge nail, which is about the thickest that fits through. And uh, now, of course, this definitely ramps it up into the immediately called the Daily Mail class. <laughs> All right, let's shoot it into the board. Bang! I think it split the wood. <laughs> Incredible, it really did split the wood. <laughs> and it sticks in very nicely. Look at the damage. And that's with an arrow made from Lego. The blunt side crashed through. And the tip flew off and went right through both sides of the can. Amazing. All right, next we have to do the inevitable ballistic gelatin test. <laughs> and I confess that I increased the amount of rubber on this thing so that it's now quite hard to cock back. But we want to see what happens when it is maxed out. And we're starting just shooting some regular three uh, of these bricks out of the pistol. Okay, let's do it. And fire. Ha! Not bad, I can see a dent. You can clearly see how this actually broke the skin of the gelatin. Let's see how deep this cut in. All right. I'd say the edge really embedded itself at least about eight or nine millimeters. Next, we're testing this little stinger here. Aim again. And fire! Ha! It sticks in all the way. <laughs> okay, as you see, it sticks in all the way and the plastic also did an additional cut. Here is the next one. <laughs> See that we have sharpened the edge even more, so it's more sharp than a regular nail. And also, I made this little wooden Lego block to ease penetration into the gelatin. Let's see if that works. All right. Ha! I can see a piece of Lego inside of the gelatin. <laughs> Yep, here's the damage. So the green one and half of the blue one and of course our little wooden block was fully inside of the gelatin. Amazing. I read up a little bit on Wikipedia about where Lego comes from and it's actually derived from the original uh, term in Danish and it's pronounced something like lie goat and this means play good, play well. And I think I have to rechristen this. This is now Drago. <laughs> and I derive it from the Danish Drabegoat. 
again, you figure out what that means because otherwise I'm sure YouTube will demonetize my video. Next thing on our list of tests about the uh, Drago is this coconut. And I'd actually be very surprised if this thing would be able to pierce a coconut. But we never know before we test it. So here it goes. All right. Let's aim again. And fire! Wow, it pierced it. I can't believe it. It sticks in. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, we can move it out. Actually, the coconut milk is not coming out, so it went in about that far, which is still very, very impressive, but I guess it's not a zombie kill, so sorry for that. <laughs> still impressive. One thing that we have to find out is how well do these fly over some distances, because they're really not like an arrow. Yes, they are a little front heavy, and this has some drag, but will they fly stable? So we try to shoot them into the uh, side of my barn. <laughs> I hope that I'm gonna hit it. And we will try to shoot this three block, three brick block first without any nail in it. And fire! Woo! That was not bad. That was actually a lot higher than I thought. There was pr practically no ballistics. And it went a little bit, of course, in the end. I'm not sure if you noticed it. Next is our tiny little shooter here. All right, I, I'll aim a little bit lower now. Let's see. Ha! Wow, it sticks. Great. Let's go up in caliber. Mid-size one. And fire. Ha! It also sticks. These fly great. Now the Drago. <laughs> Bing. All three of them stick. Let's look it up. All right, there they are. Not bad. Medium sized one. Oh, wow, it sticks in hard. Small one. Yeah, it's not so hard. And the Drago. Wow. Okay. Not bad. I have to say, this thing really has power. And I never thought that just with a nail you can make Lego blocks into deadly ammo. <laughs> but of course I love it and I hope you do too, because that's it for today. Ah, thanks and bye bye. <laughs>